good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video today, ladies and gentlemen, or tonight, whether you're watching this after Monday Night Raw or you're watching this the following Tuesday morning, this is our first Monday Night Raw review of the of the time man i've done this in the past before i didn't really like the way it was going you know it was very excruciating to get through monday night raw at times and if we're basing it off of this show tonight that shit may happen again because this show was just it, it was like freaking painful to sit through at times not gonna bullshit with you like the freaking commercial breaks and the just constant just agony like it's just good god but i will say getting in front of the camera and talking about it with you guys is a lot better. Like, I, I swear to God, like, when I watch the shows, it's like, Jesus Christ, this is abysmal at times. And then when I sit down and I'm actually reviewing the show and talking about it with you guys and giving you my personal opinions on everything, it actually feels quite refreshing and it feels good. So maybe, maybe I will like it as we go on. And you know, it'll make it even twice as good when the shows are actually good in my personal opinion. But we're gonna break down everything that happened tonight on Monday Night Raw. I'm gonna give you my personal feelings and aspects, what I think of the feuds going on, what I think of the matches tonight, what I think of the storylines progressing, what I thought of everything in between that happened on June 8th's edition of Monday Night Raw. And we'll just see how this thing goes. If it sucks, it sucks, and we'll, we'll never do it again, or we'll bring it back later on, or whatever. But I at least, I think, want to do Monday Night Raw on Friday Night Smackdown of this week. So let's shut the hell up. I'm going to dive into Monday Night Raw and give you my full-fledged review on the June 8th edition of the Red Brand. So the show does open up with Asuka, guys. She was set to take on Charlotte, which I thought was a very weird matchup to open the show with anyways. You know, after Charlotte just lost her championship last night on NXT and then just uh, not even a few hours later, here she is on Monday Night Raw battling with the Raw Women's Champion. I don't know how I feel about that, but she's out there. She's getting ready for her matchup. Out of nowhere, out come the brand new Women's Tag Team Champions, Bayley and Sasha Banks, titled not staying on her arm there. They come out, you know, they're cutting the shit. They're getting in Asuka's face. They're saying they're the new champions and they're saying, you know, since we're the Women's Tag Team Champions, we can show up on any brand anytime we want, and I was like, okay, at least you're explaining yourself. Makes sense to me. I, I get it. You know, there's no uh, problems with it there. Will you stay on the freaking arm, you piece of garbage? So they're all out there doing their thing, doing their thing. Out of nowhere, Brad, here comes the former NXT Women's Champion Charlotte Flair to get her business in, because you know, she's got to get her business in, Brad. She cannot go a second without getting her stuff in there. She comes out there, they're all cutting the shit, they're all talking trash to each other, of course, and and then out of nowhere, out come the Iconics, Billy Kay and Peyton Royce join in on the party. I thought this was a terrible start to Monday Night Raw, to be honest. I don't really care for when the show opens and then you have person after person after person coming in and coming in and coming in. I'm not a big fan of that. And then out of nowhere, we get an impromptu tag team triple threat match with Asuka and Charlotte getting on the same team doing battle against these teams. I honestly don't see the whole reasoning behind this, but Charlotte and and Asuka do get the win. So the new tag team champions, Bailey and Sasha, do lose. Charlotte and Asuka do pick up the win. And then after the matchup, Charlotte attacks Asuka. And then we learn that the matchup of Asuka and Charlotte will still take place tonight. And it will be the main event of Monday Night Raw. So it looks like we are headed towards an Asuka and Charlotte feud. Oh my god, yay. Sarcasm times infinity. Next up, guys, my man Seth Rollins comes out to the ring. He goes to the commentary booth. And he is going to sit there as we get an interview over Skype, over the airwaves to none other than Rey Mysterio. You guys know that Seth Rollins and Rey Mysterio have been engaged in their own little feud here. The Monday Night Messiah going after Rey Mysterio, saying he had to use him as a sacrifice and stuffed his eye on the steel steps on the outside. So they have their little interview. Rey and Rollins go back and forth. Rollins invites Rey and Dominic, his son obviously, to Monday Night Raw next week. But then Rey Mysterio is like, you know what, you're inviting me because you you know I can't compete and that's bullsh you know Seth you know that's bullsh and Monday Night Rollins is like you know what Brad I don't I don't know what you're talking about and then out of nowhere Alistair Football Black comes in and takes out Seth Rollins and then we immediately cut to commercial it was very odd and it, it made no sense that Seth Rollins didn't see Alistair Black coming out of nowhere to be honest with you so we come back from commercial break and we have a tag team match between Humberto Carrillo and Alistair Black taking on Austin Theory and Buddy 
Murphy, and Black and Korea win pretty fast. You know, they, they win. I think we've seen this tag team match in multiple occasions over the last few weeks. Seth and company beat down Aleister Black, beat the hell out of him, and they do stand tall on him. I want to say I heard Rey Mysterio's music. I don't know if that was supposed to be a distraction. I, I don't even know what the hell happened, but I look up, I hear Rey Mysterio's music. I was taking care of my son at the same time, so I wasn't fully paying attention, but I heard Rey's music, but it wasn't Rey there. I, I don't know. Maybe he was there. I didn't see Rey. I don't know what the hell's going on. Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy and Austin Theory beat the shit out of Aleister Black. So we cut backstage to an interview with Randy Orton with Charlie, and they basically cut the crap, and you know, they say something about the peep show with Christian and Edge, and Randy Orton pretty much says there will be two guests on the Christian peep show, pretty much implying that he is going to make an appearance on this show. So when we come back, that is indeed what we have, ladies and gentlemen. We have the peep show with Christian. His guest is Edge, his best friend, his tag team partner for many, many years. Champions together, best friends right here. And Christian lays into Edge, man. He gives him the hard-hitting questions. He's like, you know, you don't seem like the old Edge. You know, you seem soft. You seem weak. You seem broken down. And Edge and him had some beautiful words, man. They went back very passionately. Hopefully, you can find this on YouTube if you guys missed it. Definitely look up this segment. I thought it was very powerful. You know, uh, Christian pretty much you know, cuts him down to size a little bit and is like, I know what you're capable of and you're pretty much, you're a choke artist. How are you supposed to live up to the expectation of this matchup, this greatest wrestling match ever? How the hell is that supposed to happen? It's not gonna happen. And Edge fires right back at his ass and is like, do you know what it's like, man? I, 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 don't, I can't even put it into words. It was really good. It was very good. Edge knows what the hell he's doing. He's super good. One of the best of all time. And both of these guys did an excellent job in this segment right here. So definitely go check this out. But they're going back and forth and then out of nowhere, you think Randy Orton's going to come out of here with an RKO, but actually, he just appears on the Jumbotron and uh, pretty much cuts down both guys down to size and pretty much says Edge is, is not going to be able to do anything in this best wrestling match ever and that he is going to take care of him and that uh, he is pretty much washed up and that his the revitalization of his career is not going to happen and then pretty much it cuts back to Edge and he says I'm not done yet, bish, and and then that was the end of the segment. But I thought this segment was great. I, I find myself invested in it. While I don't think they're going to live up to this hype that they're putting around this match, and I think it's really stupid to have this moniker around your match with the best wrestling match ever. That's just preposterous. I am invested in the matchup, and I'm actually uh, kind of looking forward to what they pull out of their bungholes on this one. But <laughs> thumbs up on this segment. All right, this next segment made really no sense to me. MVP's cutting an interview. Out of nowhere comes R-Truth. You know, R-Truth comes up, and he's like, yeah, 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 cutting crap and he's like I pinned Rob Gronkowski for the 24-7-11 championship trophy and then big Bobby bad boy comes out of nowhere kicks the hell out of our truth and that was pretty much the end of the segment I was like okay we're attacking our truth now for no reason I didn't understand that but that's what we got MVP and Bobby Trashley beat up on our truth all right from here we would go into the Street Profits and Viking Raiders segment and I don't have those figures and that whole entire segment with the decathlon and the anything I can do you can I, I can good just god awful. All, everything about those segments is very cringy to me. It's very lame, and I would never want one of my family members or any of my friends to watch that with me. Like, if I sit down and I'm watching wrestling and they come in and watch that, I would be super embarrassed to show them that. But anyways, that's it for that. Next up, guys, would be the United States Championship number one contender triple threat match between Angel Garza, Kevin Owens, and Andrade. The winner of this triple threat number one contender match will be taking on Apollo Crews for the U.S. Championship at Backlash. And I was very intrigued by this. I was very super interested because my boy Kevin Owens is involved. And I like Andrade. I'm not a Garza fan. But you know what? I'm invested in the matchup. I want to see who wins this thing. And Garza and Andrade beat the hell out of Owens. They double team him. This is a pretty good football game. Not nothing too over the top special. But it was pretty good. At the end of the day, Andrade gets the win. Pinning Angel Garza after Kevin Owens gives him a stunner. So I'm guessing this is going to create some good uh, cracks in the foundation of Andrade. Andrade and Garza moving forward here, but Kevin Owens does not get it, and he seemed a little bit uh, upset after the match. After, uh, I mean, obviously he would be, but it seemed that he was a little bit, uh, you know, staring off into space and stuff. I'm interested to see where they go from here with him. Would have loved to see KO get a piece of that gold, but here we are. Next up was a segment between the WWE Champion Drew McIntyre and MVP. They were going back and forth on the microphone because MVP is the mouthpiece of Bobby Trashley, who is taking on Drew McIntyre at Backlash for the WWE 
WWE Championship. After this, we would get the Viking Raiders taking on Bobby Trashley and MVP in a tag team match, and Bobby and MVP would win, and it seems that they're really putting over this full Nelson move that Bobby Lashley has been doing, so I'm sure that will play a huge role in the storyline as it already has, and into the matchup come Backlash with Bobby Trashley and Drew McIntyre, but didn't really care for this, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. Bobby Trashley and MVP continue to win. And then we look up, and it is main event time, Charlotte versus Asuka. You know, this matchup was solid. I'm not going to bullshit with you. It was a pretty good game, but I do not care about the outcome because I don't want Charlotte Flair anywhere near this ish. She did nothing with the NXT Championship. She won the Royal Rumble for nothing. I, I do not know why we are where we are, but it looks like we are going to get a feud out of these two after the Nia Jax feud. Speaking of which, Nia Jax comes in distracts Asuka, and Charlotte pins Asuka. So now she has a win over the Raw Women's Champion, which you guys know what that means in WWE. That is an automatic title opportunity. So I'm guessing Asuka will beat Nia Jax at Backlash, and we're going to be set up for a Charlotte-Asuka feud that we have seen in the past. While they always put on good matches, can we get somebody else face up in here? I love Asuka. I think she's the best women's wrestler in the world. But good God in heaven, Brad, do we have to see this again? But anyways, that was your Monday Night Raw. That is your Monday Night Raw review. I really don't know what else to say. I, I thought the show was pretty boring to sit through to be honest with you, but I did want to come in here and give you guys my honest review and see what you guys thought of the review. If you guys want to see this continue, please let me know down in the comment section below. I know a lot of people aren't watching the shows right now, so maybe you could just use me as a Raw recap button possibly, but I did my best to sit through it and give you guys my honest analysis of it. I cannot wait for the freaking crowds to return. That is something that I will say right now. And I am looking forward to a couple matches at Backlash. Backlash is coming up on this Sunday, so we are going to have our setups and our predictions and everything moving forward as we approach Backlash. But I am not in tune with the idea of Charlotte getting in line for the Raw Women's Championship after she has, she has been in line so many damn times before. But I guess I will see you guys for the SmackDown review. And we have a My Damn Halls coming either tomorrow or the next day, so you guys can get excited about that. But thank you guys for watching in the Monday Night Raw review. This show was pretty boring for the most part. I'd say the best part of the show was either the triple threat match or the Randy Orton and Edge segment by far. But thank you guys for watching. That's going to do it for this video. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. Let me know what you think of the Raw review down in the comment section below. Do you want to see the series continue? Subscribe, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.